Coming up on your Delta News Morning on Fox, a Delta community is mourning the loss of a teenager. Details on what led up to the tragic incident in Indianola straight ahead. Plus, Mississippi Lieutenant Governor makes a stop right here in the Delta on his campaign trail. More on what his plans are if he becomes governor. Details coming up straight ahead, but first we're going to get a quick check of our forecast with Karen. Good morning. Good morning. The rain is out of here and what we have now is partly sunny skies and guess what? The temperatures are going to be even warmer. I'll have your full forecast coming up later as the Delta News Fox Edition starts now. News that works for you. This is the Delta News Morning. Good morning and welcome to the Delta News on Fox. I'm Faith Alford and today is Tuesday, April 9th of 2019. Thank you all for joining us. Now getting to some of our top stories this morning. We begin with this. An Indianola Academy student loses his life over the weekend after what authorities are calling an accidental shooting. 17-year-old Caleb Smith died on Sunday at UMC Hospital in Jackson after he was accidentally shot. The incident happened around 8 a.m. Sunday at a sleepover with friends. Officials tell the Delta to news Smith and his friends had recently gone to a 4-H shooting class and when they got home they were handling a gun. The gun then fired shooting Smith. A 16 year old was holding the gun at the time. This is an ongoing investigation. The Indianola Police Department and District Attorney's Office. It is unknown whether charges will be filed against the 16 year old. Smith was a junior football and baseball player at Indianola Academy. Funeral services are scheduled for this Friday, April 12th at 2 p.m. Visitation will be held from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Thursday, April the 11th at the Indianola Academy Gym. Now to this, a Yazoo County man has been sentenced to life plus 20 years in prison. After a five-day trial, a jury in Yazoo County found Jel Jelani Miles guilty of murder and aggravated assault. Miles was tried for the 2011 fatal shooting of Cortez Tate and the wounding of Perry Hollins. He was also found guilty of shooting into a vehicle. Officials say Miles was another murder case, has another murder case pending. He is a suspect in the 2014 death of Hollins. The 21st Circuit Court District Attorney's Office says Hollins was killed the morning before he was supposed to testify against Miles. An early morning fire at a daycare in Greenville is under investigation. Around 3 a.m. Monday morning, fire crews responded to a fire at the daycare at 449 South 6th Street. Firemen, firemen found heavy smoke and flames coming from the structure. No one was there at the time of the fire. State fire marshals found multiple spots of the fire origin and are currently still investigating. In regional news, a Mississippi family is counting their blessings after a tornado destroyed their home but spared their lives. The front steps and debris are all that is left of the Lowless family's mobile home in Centerville. The family of four was not home when the twister hit Sunday afternoon. The National Weather Service confirms the damage caused by an EF1 tornado. The storm knocked down trees in other parts of Wilkinson County. Staying in regional news, two tornadoes touched down in Alabama early yesterday morning. The National Weather Service confirming the tornadoes in Blount and Marshall counties, a powerful storm system producing the two tornadoes, both EF1 strength with winds peaking near 100 miles per hour. Damage has been reported in both counties with power lines down well in some areas. I just looked outside to see if if it was bad and it was spinning around and trees were breaking right in front of me. So then we ran and hid and it was gone in a hurry. More rain and storms are expected across the area through tonight. Now back here in the Delta, county officials are preparing to take action and on damage left behind by severe weather storms. As rainfall continues, the Delta News' Aaliyah Sims reports on a plan from Carroll County. Due to the heavy rainfall that the state has received in recent months, three municipalities in Carroll County, North Carrollton, Carrollton, and Vaden, have signed and filed proclamations of existence of a local emergency. By filing that, that put us to where we could try to recover funds from it. And then Governor Bryant done a state uh, a declaration, and now we're waiting on a federal declaration. During the flooding back in February, debris was washed down into a ditch near a road leading to Jay-Z George High School. Officials worked to remove that debris to avoid backwater flooding. 
water to get up higher in here and start washed up against the top of the bank up there. There's a reason we got to try to build that wall up some more to hold more dirt in there to, so we can correct this problem. This is a school over there and everything. School buses cross here every day. Also, County Road 193, which is a heavily traveled road, has been barricaded for safety precautions. It's soft. It's just like, you know, it's kind of like quicksand, kind of. You know, it's what it feels like. I mean, it's uh, down through here. It's a lot of houses on this road, and they got to take precautions, you know, on this side here. And, and like what the supervisor urged them to do is, you know, is go around. Ken Stratton, mayor of North Carrollton, signed a continuing proclamation Monday morning in case of more flooding within the next 30 days. He says the total amount of damage is about $900,000 for the entire county. And then in Baden, you have a health care facility that was damaged. Uh, then you have sewer problems in, in Baden, water problems in Carrollton. And then, then we got these washouts in North Carrollton. If we hadn't have done a declaration of emergency, you know, that, that let, let them aware, you know, the problem we got. And that way we can try to bring funds back to these three municipalities and, and Carroll County. In Carroll County, Aaliyah Sims, the Delta News. FEMA and MEMA officials to visit Carroll County this week to further assess the damage. Staying in Carroll County, a local bridge closed down nearly a year is one step closer to reopening. Carroll County residents forced to take alternative routes due to the closure of Bridge 160 located on Country Road 104. This will soon change. Board of Supervisor Terry Brown says a 400 thousand dollar bond was recently approved to repair the damage the bridge the bridge covers one of the main routes from jefferson to highway 35 no repair timeline or completion date has been announced lieutenant governor tate reeves makes a stop right here in the Delta to begin his campaign tour for governor's race. Reeves, now running for Mississippi governor, Mississippi governor, served as lieutenant governor for the last eight years, now working towards a higher office. Reeves is one of three Republican candidates in the race, along with State Representative Robert Foster and former Mississippi Supreme Court Chief Justice Bill Waller Jr. Reeves tells us one of his main focuses is strengthening the economy by adding more jobs to the state. The number one priority of, of Mississippi uh, has to be job creation, bringing better and higher paying jobs to our state. Uh, but intrinsic within that is, is ensuring that we have um, an educated workforce that can fill those jobs of tomorrow. We, we are in a, a good position in Mississippi in that we have the lowest unemployment rate in our state's history. We have more people working today than at any time in our state's history. And we've got almost 80,000 more people working today than we're working just eight years ago. And so uh, we've made a lot of progress, but we have more work to do. We've got to increase per capita income in our state. We've got to have the jobs uh, where people can provide for their families. Reeves hosted a campaign kickoff rally in Pearl last night and has 15 more stops to go. Now to this, a Mississippi National Guard unit is back home after serving in the Middle East. Soldiers from the 155th Armored Brigade Combat Team returned Saturday after participating in Operation Spartan Shield. The unit was deployed in 2018. Family members stood by to greet their soldiers as they stepped off of the plane. It's absolutely amazing to be home. Still a bit unreal. Hasn't settled in. Uh, the year wasn't as bad because I had a great support system as you can see behind me, and so it went by a lot quicker than most people think. I told him when he went over that after this he'll be able to do anything he wants to do in his life. This is probably the hardest thing he's had to do, so it means that now he can start focusing on his education, his career. The 155th Armored Brigade Combat Team is the largest guard unit in Mississippi with about 3,500 soldiers. Now to this, the Mississippi Department of Public Safety announcing Colonel Chris Gillard as the Mississippi Trailblazer of the Year. Colonel Gillard is the Assistant Public Safety Commissioner and Director of the Mississippi Highway Safety Patrol. He is a Tupelo native and is a recent graduate of the Federal Bureau of Investigations. National Executive Institute Academy, Colonel Gillard has served 25 years in law enforcement. He has worked in many different areas of the Mississippi Highway Patrol, including Director of the Driver Service Bureau, Director of Training, Executive Officer to the Commissioner of Public Safety, Safety Governor Executive Protection Detail, Drug Trafficking Interdiction, and he has also served as Highway Safety Patrol Recruiter. He has done it all. Now to this, back here in the Delta, Go Greenville! 
gearing up for its eighth annual summer internship program. The program offers college juniors and seniors who are graduates of Greenville High Schools an opportunity to take on a 10 week internship course. Students get the opportunity to select local businesses to shadow and intern with. To participate, the application de deadline is Friday, May 3rd. Interested students should pick up an application from City Hall. For more info, you can call the coordinator, Kyla Washington, at 662-378-1534. You can also send an email to kyla.washington at greenvillems.org. We will have more coming up on your Delta News after the break, but first we're going to check in at our weather center. Sunny skies replace those rainy skies, but for how long? I'll have your detailed forecast coming up after the break. Welcome back to your Delta News on Fox. We are currently taking a live look outside. We are facing east over Highway 82, Mississippi River Bridge. This is what you call picture perfect. The green, is, the sun is peeking up and you can see that blue in the sky. It is gorgeous today. We will have more of a check in with our weather with Karen. Good morning. Good morning. As you can see, finally sun. We finally earned the sun. We can start to dry out for at least a couple of days. We still have our warnings to the south for flooding, and that's going to be an indefinite uh, period of time. But for the most part, we have very good news for the next couple of days. Now, looking at your bus staff, your bus stop forecast, I'm trying to talk here. We have partly sunny skies. Highs reaching uh, 60 degrees and then partly sunny later on will reach 82 degrees at 3 p.m. Highs around the region, we have Chula at 80, Carrollton 79, Grenada at 80, Charleston at 80, and Belts, Batesville at 79, Clarksdale at 79. That will be our high for the day. Our lows will get down into the mid to upper 50s with Carrollton 55, Clarks. Clarksdale 57, Cleveland 57. So those are your low temperatures. For tomorrow, even warmer. The little bit above 80, 83 at Carrollton, Chula at 83, and then Indianola 83. So a nice reprieve. Around our nation, we have a range of the lowest being Bangor Mayor male, excuse me, 27, I'm losing my voice here, and 77, the highest in Miami. So you have your pick there. And then we have a lot of temperatures in between with 66 in Columbus. So you can't beat it right now. Now, looking at those Mississippi River levels at Greenville, we have 
we're still a little bit above flood stage at 49.6. So I, I'm suspecting probably when they take the readings a little bit later on, hopefully it'll just be sustained there for a minute and then eventually they will go down. For the Yazoo River le levels, we're up a bit at 33, 33 for Thursday, but we're still below flood stage. Now, looking at our forecast, partly sunny sky, high of 82 degrees with a north wind at 10 miles per hour. Then tonight, clear skies, a low at 54, winds out of the north northwest at 5 miles per hour. Tomorrow, even warmer, 83 degrees with plenty of sunshine, wind out of the east southeast, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then for our seven day forecast, Thursday, we have a little bit of a disturbance that's going to come our way. So some folks will see a little bit of showers, 30% chance, 80 degrees, and then a little bit cooler on Friday and a 20% chance. I would say Friday night would be more likely to see a little bit of shower here and there. But of course, at the weekend, we're going to have increased chances of rain, temperatures in the low 70s, and then Monday, nice sunshine, 73 degrees. Well, that looks mm, like 50, 50. You see, the, you see the sun on today and like we saw outside, it looks beautiful, but then you see another rainy weekend possible. Possible, it's, okay. still, it's still a little early yet. It, uh -huh. it may, you know, it may change here yes. and there, but it all depends on mm -hmm. the system, how fast it gets here and how fast it gets out of here. Okay, now with the um, rain that we experienced yesterday, because I felt like it was just kept raining. Mm -hmm. Did you see any, um, did the river levels raise any? The, ri the river levels went up a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit, but again, yes. they will take the readings a little bit later on, okay. so that would be the true test. Okay. I'm thinking because of the way that it just kept mm -hmm. raining and raining, yes. I know it went up a bit, mm -hmm. and depending on whether or not they um, open those gates up mm -hmm. for more water, that's also, you know, I know. a problem. So we got to hope for the best and we're going to yes. hope that, you know, the river levels don't raise anymore because I know there's such a concern for so many people out there that are in the Delta that are experiencing that flooding that is right. so consistently yeah. done. So we're going to hope for less Especially rain. Especially for the farmers. Yes, I know. We've been seeing, having so many stories on that. So we're hoping for the best for our Delta area. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Karen. Mm -hmm. We will have more coming up on your Delta News. We will have a look at some Hollywood scandals and we have the latest in entertainment.